Okay, so now that we have this sense of slope and even interpretation of sort of how it, how it behaves, let me show you how you could actually use the numerical value of slope to actually start graphing lines. Now, uh, with the questions that I want to think about here, what we're going to be given are a point and a slope. And you might remember from before, we talked about that to really solidify one particular line in all of the plane, we only need two pieces of information. We need to know the slope, the pitch, and then we need to know a particular point that that line goes through. So just given a point and a slope, we should be able to identify precisely what that line is. And I want to illustrate that notion with, to you right now. So let's take a look at the following. I'll put the point and slope over there, and you can see I have this beautiful, beautiful grid here to do all the graphing, so I'm not going to write on this at all. So first off, what we have here is a line that has slope 3 halves, and it's to pass through the point 1, 4. So what does that mean? Well, the way to think about that is to start with the point you know. So we know that this thing is going to, this line is going to go through the point 1, 4. So I go 1 over, here are the axes, this is the y-axis, this is the x-axis. I go 1 over in the uh, x direction, and then 4 up, 1, 2, 3, 4. So we know, in fact I can mark that, the line will go somewhere through that point, somehow. So, but we don't know how the line's going to go, right? At least I don't, maybe you do. But it, there's a, you know, infinitely many lines that go through that point, right? I'm driving a car. So the thing is, I now have to know sort of what the pitch is. But that's given to us by the slope. The slope is 3 halves. So how do I use 3 halves to actually find out where the line is? Well, 3 halves represents the rise over run. So that means that for every two units I go in the x direction, I'm going to go three units in the y direction. Remember, rise, which is three, over run, which is two. So I'm going to go two over and three up, starting from this fixed point. So two over, one, two, from that point, and three up, one, two, three. So that's another point on this line. So now I have two points on the line, and of course, if you think about it, two points determine a line uniquely. So just knowing those two things, I now can actually figure out what the line looks like. Let me recap. I started at the point that I know is on the line, 1, 4, and then from that point, I now traveled over the rise over run. Now the, the run is 2, 1, 2, and the rise is 3, 1, 2, 3. Another way of looking at this is to do first, first rise and then run, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. All roads lead to this point. So now I have these two points, and if I connect them with a straight line, then, huh, easier said than done, voila! That is the exact graph of that line. And you can see what it looks like, how it's positioned in the plane, and you can also see that it, um, that it has the right slope, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. So this has slope three halves. So you can see three halves, by the way, notice is bigger than one, a little teeny bit, and this is actually steeper, this is actually steeper than the traditional diagonal line that goes right through the center. You can see that's actually more steep, a little bit more steep. That's because the slope is a little bit bigger than one. So you can start to get intuition of the value of slope against the actual thing. Anyway, there's the graph of that. Let's try another one. So for this one, what do we see? It's supposed to, this line's supposed to pass through the point minus one, minus three, and it's supposed to have slope minus four fifths. So what do we do? First we start with the point that we know the line passes through. So minus one, minus three. So I go minus one, that's one over in the x direction and negatively, and then three down. One, two, three. Doop. So the line will pass through that point. But how is it going to pass through it? There are a lot of ways. I need to know the slope. And I'm told that the slope is minus four fifths. Now we have to be careful. The minus sign tells me that this slope is going to be pitched downward somehow. Now, how downward is it going to be? Well, we're going to go minus 4 in the y direction and then 5 over in the x direction. So basically what's going to happen is the following. I'm going to go 5 over in the x direction from this point. So I'm going to start at this point, this point. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But now I go down, since it's negative, 4 units. And I may actually run off the screen here. 1, 2, 3. Three, four. Yeah, I'm way off the screen. Way off the screen. So, you know what you can do? You know what you do in life? In life, when you're off the screen, you could say, well, you can move the screen. That would require you to lift your terminal. No.
don't do that. Instead, you know what I do? You just change your axes a little bit. You know what I mean? Didn't your mom or said to you, oh, why don't you get your axes together? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if we started here, then where's the point? It's minus one, minus three, one, two, minus three. So there's the point again. And now let's go through the slope. So I'm gonna go five in a positive direction. One, two, three, four, five. But then negative four in the y direction, that means go down. One, two, three, four. Okay? You still might be able to see that. There it is. And if now you can now connect that point with our given point. There is the exact line, the exact line that passes through the point minus 1, minus 3, and has slope minus 4 over 5. Because I went 5 in a positive direction and 4 down. Another way of doing this, by the way, would be to sort of go the opposite direction, to go 4 up, but then 5 over. And if you do that, you'd see the same thing. Let me show you that. Starting at this fixed point, in fact, let me start at this point here. If I go now 4 up, 1, 2, 3, 4, that now forces me to go negative 5. So now I have to go over this way, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I'm back home. So either way is fine, but they both can't be negative, otherwise you'll have a positively sloped thing. Okay, let's try uh, one last one. This one passes through the origin, 0, comma 0, and has slope minus 1. So it passes through the origin right here at this cross, and the slope is minus 1. Well, that doesn't even sound like a fraction. Well, if something doesn't sound like a fraction, make it a fraction by putting it all over 1. So you can think of this as minus 1 divided by 1. And then what do you do? Well, you go minus 1 in a y direction, so that means go down 1. But then 1 in a positive direction means go to the right 1. So you go to this point right here. If you connect those two points, you see the very nice diagonal line, but that's negative. And that has slope minus 1 and passes through the origin. So you can see just having a point at your disposal and knowing the pitch, knowing the slope, you can actually graph perfectly what that line would be. Try some on your own. See what you think.